How's it going, folks? <coughs> ah, it's awful smoky in here. Ah, <coughs> we're up to chapter 11, Second Nephi. And we're getting through it. I mean, if you count page count, we're about in the middle. If you took out all the Isaiah, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm debating how much Isaiah I want to read to you folks. I don't want to torture you. I mean, that's, that's the last thing I want, folks. <laughs> this is supposed to be fun and interesting and silly. All right, so let's proceed. Chapter 11. And now, Jacob spake many more things to my people at, the, at that time. Nevertheless, only these things have I caused to be written. You're sure sounding like a king, Nephi. For the things which I have written sufficeth, sufficeth me. And now I, Nephi, yeah, he's claiming his book back. Yeah, quit hogging Nephi's book, Jacob. You got your own book next. <laughs> now I, Nephi, write more of the words of Isaiah. For more, for my soul delighteth in his words. For I will liken his words unto my people, and I will send them forth unto all my children. For he verily saw my Redeemer, even as I have seen him. Yeah, but you know what? Isaiah didn't have quite as clear a picture, because they throw the best Isaiah's got at us in this gold book. And um, it pales before the those Nephite prophecies. I mean, they've already got the name Christ, which is a brand new name in Greek. I mean, Alexander the Great hasn't been born yet. He hasn't taken Greek Hellenistic culture that far. I don't think they know any Greek. But they're going, Christ! <laughs> That's Greek, I believe. It's Greek or Latin. I think it's Greek. Oh, where's... It's the superfly when we need him. All right. It sufficeth me. <laughs> and my brother Jacob also has seen him as I have seen him. Yeah, he had an angel whisper the name Christ into his ear the other night. <laughs> Wherefore, I will... Send their words forth unto my children, Jacob and Isaiah. Wow. What a compliment to Isaiah, huh? Unto <sighs> my children, to, pr to prove unto them that my words are true. Good as gold. Wherefore, by the words of three... God hath said, I will establish my word. Nevertheless, God sendeth more witnesses, and he proveth all his words. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. Now that he knows his name. Oh, he knows that, that word. I don't think... Christ is a reformed Egyptian name. For, coming, wait, what the, all right. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ, for, comma, for this end hath the law of Moses been given. And all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man 
are typifying of him. How typical. How typified. And also my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made to our fathers. God, does this all sound pretty familiar to you? Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace. A whole book full of that. And a little bit of story thrown in. <laughs> and in his justice and power and mercy in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. That's what it's all about. Say it ain't so. That death thing. And my soul delighteth in proving unto my people that save Christ should come, all men must perish. So. Yeah, good thing he uh, did it for us. Thanks, JC. For if there be no Christ, there be no God. And if there be no God, we are not. Game over. Can't have it any other way. For there could have been no creation. None. But there is a God. And he is Christ. So God hasn't been born yet. <laughs> but he's, it's a weird kind of reincarnation thing. It's uh, avatar ship, I guess. <laughs> uh, but there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of our own time. And now I write some of the words of Isaiah, that whoso of my people shall see, these words may lift up their hearts and rejoice for all men. Now these are the words, and yea, may, uh, yea, may liken them unto you and unto all men. That's the end of chapter 11. Now chapter 12 is Isaiah 2. Chapter 3 is I. Uh, chapter 13 is Isaiah th 3. And I think they, Isaiah goes all the way up to like chapter 14. Uh, on chapter 24. That's all solid block of Isaiah. <laughs> wow. So let's read 12 real quick, because I think there's a drink or two in it for me. The word that I... They start with Isaiah 2. They skip over Isaiah 1, because we need chapter 11. All right. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Yeah. We're going to do this all scientific and proper-like. That way I don't have to drink as much. <clears throat> Second verse. And it shall come to pass. This is Isaiah. So, how about that? It's been a while since I've read Isaiah. I knew that there was it came to pass in the Bible, but I also knew it wasn't overly common. So it's Isaiah's little uh, trick pony. <laughs> and Nephi's and everybody, Nephi and the gang. And the whole brood. Yeah, and it shall come to pass in the last days when the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Hey, you know, I hear the North Pole's vacant right now. Just saying. And he shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall, shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, 
and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord of Jerusalem. So this is all Isaiah, all the way up to chapter 14. No, chapter 24, excuse me. Chapter 14 of Isaiah. <sighs> and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, the Lord of Jerusalem. Uh, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall lift up sword against... Wait, nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. It's pretty familiar. Archetypical. Or at least just typical. O house of Jacob, but not this Jacob. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Yea, come, for ye have all gone astray, every one to his wicked ways. Therefore, O Lord, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and hearken unto soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Hmm. <sighs> Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their fingers have made. And the mean man boweth not down, and the great man humbleth him, himself not. Therefore forgive him not. O ye wicked ones, enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust, for the fear of the Lord and the glory of his majesty shall smite thee. How about that? I'm starting to like you, Isaiah. I found you tiresome the other times I read the book, but... Ah, big shot glass. <laughs> Ah. Ah. And it shall come to pass that the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, for the day of the Lord of hosts soon cometh upon all nations, yea, upon every one. Yea, upon the proud and lofty, and upon every one who is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Smack down. And, uh, yea, and the day of the Lord shall come upon all the cedars of Lebanon, for they are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills, and upon all the nations which are lifted up, and upon ev every people, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall. A fenced wall? Okay, I get it. Yeah. <sighs> every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of the sea, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. 
and they shall go unto the holes of the rocks, and unto the caves of the earth. For the fear of the Lord shall come upon them, and the glory of his majesty shall smite them, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which he hath made for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks. For the fear of the Lord shall come upon them, and the majesty of his glory shall smite them, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Ye, cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for whereupon he has, wait, he is he to be accounted for. And that was chapter 12 of Second Nephi and chapter 2 of Isaiah. So now we got chapter 3 and it's Isaiah 3. And that's all it is. Cut and paste. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, does take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, and the whole staff of bread, and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator. And I will give children unto them to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Oh boy, that doesn't sound good. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. And a child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. And a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, and say, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler. And let not this ruin come upon, under thy hand. In that day, shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house there is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people, for Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because of their tongues and their doings have been against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Bad. To show of their continence doth witness against them and doth declare their sin to be even as Sodom, and they cannot hide it. Woe unto their souls, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Stay unto the righteous, that it is well with them for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Woe unto the wicked, for they shall perish, for the reward of their hands shall be upon them. And my people, children are their, their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. Oh, well, that's just terrible. O oh, my people, they who lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plea and standeth to judge the people, and the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes of and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard of the spo and the spoil of the poor in your houses. What mean ye? 
Ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord of hosts. Moreover, moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, bunch of hotties, are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments, <laughs> and calls and round tires like the moon, the chains of the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, whatever the fuck those things are. I'm a dungaree kind of guy. I don't get it. But please, anyone out there, definitely explain it to me. Please. I'm trying to learn here. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass. I knew there was a reason why I was doing this. Just spilled some on me. God damn it. <sighs> and it shall come to pass, instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Hey, you know, what can I say? It's starting already. What can I say? Wait, I'm going to be 51. I guess that's not too bad. <laughs> I still hate it. <sighs> Got off on a tangent, damn me. Ah. Baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she shall be desolate, and shall, shall sit upon the ground. And that's chapter 13, or chapter 3 of Isaiah. Ah, chapter 14. God, it's like a quick one. Chapter 14, 2 Nephi. And in that day, seven women, sh this is really uh, Isaiah 4. Uh, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Yeah, that happens. At least in Salt Lake City. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Untense. Unclench. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth excellent and comely to them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass. And this is getting better. Up. Now what am I going to do? I guess I'll stop reading. And it shall come to pass 
that they that are left in Zion and remain in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Because they'll be stabbed full of holes, probably. <laughs> Bunch of arrows and shit, you know. <laughs> They're holy. And tenderized also. Skewered. Ah. <sighs> Every one that is, that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the mist thereof. By the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblings a cloud of smoke by day and a shining and the shining of a flaming fire. So it was Isaiah who wrote this lame ass shit. Flaming fire. Fuck you, Isaiah. Flaming fire. Fucking misogynist. Yeah, flaming fire by night, and upon all the glory of Zion shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and a convert, and a covert for from storm and from rain. All right, that's chapter 14. So we put a dent. Uh, do I want to do another one? Nah, that's enough. All right, um, I'll see you uh, after I sober up so I can do this all over again. You guys have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is. Peace out.